As the manager of a transportation agency with employees who may come into contact with harmful materials and waste in the workplace, I want each and every one of you to pay close attention to the important information this Transportation Workers Waste and Harmful Materials Awareness Training Program has to offer. As you go about your jobs of designing, constructing, and maintaining transportation facilities, you need to be aware of the health and safety risks of the harmful materials you may use or accidentally encounter. When using potentially harmful materials or working around them, you must always follow the manufacturer's instructions and standard health and safety precautions. If you unexpectedly encounter hazardous materials or waste when working in the field, keep your distance and immediately report your findings to your supervisor. Also, I want you to know that this awareness training program itself will not equip you to work with harmful materials and waste. Much more intensive waste management training is needed before you use, store, handle, or dispose of those materials which may threaten two of your most precious possessions, your health and safety. Thank you. On any given day, design personnel are involved in a lot of different activities. Some of these could expose you to harmful materials. Our mission in this tape is to help you be more aware of the presence of common harmful materials. And by being more aware, you may better protect your health and safety by minimizing your exposure to harmful materials. You're probably aware of some of the harmful materials and situations connected with your job. So here's a quick quiz to get you started. We're going to show you some locations you could visit as part of your work. Which one do you think could expose you to harmful materials? A typical junkyard? An abandoned gas station? A stream near a bridge? A wetland? Or a beautiful area like this? Okay, which one did you choose? You could have chosen the junkyard because of the obvious hazards like battery acids. So that's a possible right answer. An abandoned gas station is a likely place to find petroleum contamination. Another possible right answer here. And of course, in and alongside streams, particularly near bridges, you'll find discarded materials which could be harmful. You never know what you'll find in a wetland since the water and brush hide or absorb harmful materials. So wetlands could be another right answer. And here, you don't know what's around this lake or seeping into the water contaminating it. So even a location as pretty as this could harbor harmful materials. This is the kind of quiz that everyone loves. No matter which activity you selected, you get a passing grade. All the possibilities could, now let me emphasize that again, could expose you to harmful materials. That does not mean that your jobs are unsafe. It means that you need to know more about the presence of harmful materials and situations, know what to do to protect yourself, and know how to do the job correctly. Why? Our industrial society has done an excellent job of leaving harmful materials behind. The U.S. Environmental Protection Agency lists Pennsylvania second in the country in Superfund waste sites. And what about unidentified sites? There may be plenty of those, too. Harmful materials can be found anywhere, on state highway rights of way, in active or abandoned buildings, even in unexpected places like rural or busy locations. And don't forget about the products you use in your work. They're useful, yes, but some are harmful and require you to follow safety precautions. What we're dealing with here is a case of the known and unknown. If you identify the presence of herbicides, raw sewage, or asbestos insulations, there are precautions to follow. But what about the unknown, the buried waste site, the seemingly harmless trash, or the unmarked materials found in inlets or streams? 
If you suspect the presence of a harmful material, what do you do? In these and similar situations, we'll give you guidance because some materials may be harmful to your health and safety if you don't take proper precautions. When we say harmful materials and wastes, we mean substances that could pose a risk to your health or safety or the environment. Most harmful materials are in solid or liquid form. Such materials may become more harmful if you breathe fumes created by mixing or using some chemicals, or when you allow vapors to escape, for example, from opening containers which may harbor harmful materials, or when you stir up dust, which you could breathe or carry with you on your clothes. Now that we've covered the basics, let's take a look at some real work situations. Paul. Hi. Where are you going? We're going up to Boyce Road to do a fill view on that bridge replacement over Chartier's Creek. Well, we're going to survey out there next week. How about if you find anything, let us know. We'll make sure to do that. Okay, take care. Yeah, see you later. Never see you. I don't know, bud. This place looks pretty clean. I don't think we're going to find anything out here. Special permits? I have to get a uh, 105. Should we cover this with plans and the drawings also? Yeah, you have to see what it's like. Hey, bud, look at this. What do you think it is? Looks like an old tank, Paul. Well, I wouldn't even worry about it. We have the contract to fill it up, dress it up, and we're grading the slopes. Just cover it over there. Well, this area looks a lot different down here than it is from the brick. Yeah, it looks pretty nice. Yeah. Hey, look. There's a couple workers over there taking the lunch break. Yeah, we should have brought our lunch. We could have had a picnic. Yeah. Too bad we didn't think about that. Do you think we're going to find anything out here? I don't think so, Paul. It's pretty clean. I don't know what that is. I don't know what it's smelling. I can't make it out. We should tell the guys back in the office there. I would not Yeah, we should just... Yeah, really picturesque area. Something like you see in those paintings. This place is harmless. Yeah. Yeah. Pretty good day for the field, dude. Yeah. So this is a nice little park, Paul. Yeah. Well, let's head back to the office. Okay. Bud, where were you guys today? We were down at Boyce Road Bridge. Did you find anything? Didn't see a thing, just a lot of wet ground. Let's take a look at how the design staff did in identifying the possible presence of harmful materials or wastes. In the office, the design staff set out for the field view without referring to any initial site assessment or land use documentation. They didn't even look at the plans for the site. Referring to documentation is an important starting point. Learn as much as you can about a property before you set foot on it. In addition to site assessment documentation, there may be aerial photographs, fire insurance maps, or old registers to examine. Even when you're in a hurry, take whatever time you have to find out as much as you can about the history of the property before you visit it. At the stream, Paul and his assistant looked around, but they didn't really observe. They focused solely on the important design and engineering problems forgetting entirely the possible presence of harmful materials. By doing so, they missed obvious clues indicating contamination. In today's industrial world, you can no longer conduct business with that kind of thinking. The presence of harmful materials is common. Years ago, I, if I was walking along the same area or walking between buildings or in abandoned areas where uh, uh, my project might take me, it wouldn't have bothered me so much because I probably wouldn't have been aware of all the possibilities of hazardous and toxic waste that you could encounter. It's part of your job to identify the presence of harmful substances. So be on your guard, be observant, and think out situations. Next, they found an underground storage tank. Again, the possible presence of harmful materials was the furthest thing from their minds. They noticed, but failed to attribute any importance to the presence of the storage tank. 
When you find something suspicious, be on your guard. These plans didn't show any tanks, Greg. The presence of discarded barrels is another obvious clue. Having lunch on or near containers like this should never be done. They failed to notice or warn the workers. Paul should have informed the supervisor of the danger and carefully inspected the barrels. Then he should have secured the area and notified his own supervisor and district environmental manager. This should have been done even if the workers are employed by another organization. In this area, Paul stepped on a clue and disregarded it. In fact, by kicking the bags, he created dust, which he inhaled and which probably contaminated his clothes and skin. He may now carry contaminated dust to his vehicle, workplace, even possibly his home. They also failed to see the nearby stressed vegetation and a dead animal, more obvious clues to be observed and heeded. Paul should have observed the unmarked bags carefully and worn gloves to handle them. Then they should have looked for clues nearby the bags, like stressed vegetation or dead wildlife. As Paul and Bud passed through the park, they met their first real unknown harmful situation. In the previous situations, there were visual clues. Now there is nothing to indicate any problems. While stressed vegetation is a good first clue, an attractive, clean area, even one in use like a park, doesn't eliminate the possibility of buried waste. This is the original plan, In this case, initial site assessments and other documents are even more important and may provide you with your only indications of the previous use of the property. However, there are some visual clues that may tip you off to the presence of harmful materials. Ground contours which are different from the surrounding area. Odors, remnant wastes, unnaturally colored soil areas or wet areas, and the presence of culverts or monitoring wells. During the preliminary and final design phases of the transportation project development process, there's a lot of field work going on. From the project scoping stage, when the project study team walks the project area, to the final design stage, when extensive soil samples for geotechnical analysis are taken, the potential to encounter harmful materials and waste always exist. We want each individual on the project study team to be aware of the potential threats to their health and safety as they conduct their field investigations as part of the engineering and environmental studies. Remember, the presence of a buried waste site identified in the design phase may pose little threat to you at this point in the project, but it's very important to find it if a dump is hidden there. It's equally important to communicate those findings to appropriate personnel before construction begins. It's important to identify it in the design phase whenever possible. There's a lot of money being spent trying to clean up uh, sites that were discovered in construction and the idea is to prevent that happening and discover the waste uh, before you go into construction. So, no matter whether you're dealing with a known harmful situation or come upon a previously unknown one, be aware of the proper action to take. Research a site before you visit by referring to any initial site assessment or land use documents. When possible, obtain aerial photographs, fire insurance maps, and old deed registers. If there are residents in the area, talk with them about past uses of the property. In the event you identify the presence of harmful materials or are suspicious of their presence, there are four main actions to remember. Flag the areas if possible. Communicate your suspicions or findings to on-site workers, your supervisor, and the district environmental manager. Write down your findings, noting the specific location and details of any problems. In addition to reporting verbally to your supervisor and the environmental manager, see that each receives a copy of your written summary. And seek medical attention if you think you have been exposed. Okay, let's take a look at how you can identify the presence of harmful materials or wastes. Your most important tools are your senses. Your sense of sight is your best tool. 
not just to look, but to really observe any possible danger signs like oil stains on water, discarded materials, or stressed vegetation. Your sense of smell and touch should be used carefully. Be cautious about inhaling any fumes or dust. If it's not necessary to touch unknown substances, don't do it. Wear gloves and proper protective gear if you do. Most of all, use the control center for your senses, your brain. Be suspicious of anything out of the ordinary. Think before you act. What happens if you are exposed without proper protection? How do contaminants enter your body? It could occur through inhalation. Entry by breathing is the easiest method. Or through ingestion, by eating or drinking. Wash your hands thoroughly after exposure and before eating or drinking or through dermal absorption, by absorption through the skin or an open wound. In all of these major exposure situations, contaminants are picked up by the blood and carried throughout the body to areas where effects may be felt immediately or later. While the effects of exposures are not the same for everyone, there are two important factors that will normally affect you. The first is dose, both the length of exposure and the amount of concentration of the exposure are important. Obviously, as these get more severe, so will the effect on you. The effects of some poisons, however, may not be noticeable immediately, and so are especially dangerous. Lead poisoning, for example, accumulates in the brain and organs, and may not bother you until after permanent physical damage has occurred. So the rationalization of I've been doing this job for years and I'm just as healthy as the next guy, can be fooling yourself. When the effects of the accumulation become obvious, it may be too late to hope for recovery. The second factor affecting you is the type of contaminant. There are acids and caustics, which irritate, poisons, which attack a particular organ or nerves, carcinogens, which cause cancer, asphyxiants, which displace oxygen and cause suffocation, and medical waste and sewage, which can cause infection. Since design personnel may be the first on the scene, you can see how important it is that you know the danger signs and think out situations to minimize your exposure to harmful materials and wastes. Anytime you go out on an ISA or a field view on a project, uh, you don't know what you're going to find out there. You can uh, go out to a site that looks absolutely harmless and innocent and uh, you start digging down in the ground and you could come up with all kinds of nightmares. Up to a few years ago I would have said our job is safe but in the last few years as we're becoming more and more aware of hazardous waste and how easy it is to encounter it along our state highways I would say it makes me a little bit more cautious. I don't feel my job's unsafe just need to be more aware of what is out there. It's frequently difficult to make people understand uh, the importance of reviewing the documents and uh, to uh, uh, go out and do a site inspection and take care in doing the site inspection. And trying to, to impress this, uh, the importance of this, we've developed checklists for people to follow that reinforces uh, what they should be looking for. We also try to copy any pertinent uh, documents in, in publications and to sort of remind them of, of problems that can be encountered and the seriousness of the problem. When the people in our title search section do a title search and tell us what companies were there before, we have a little bit of insight into perhaps what was manufactured there. And that gives us uh, a reason to look closer before we go in as far as what possible hazards may be at that site. Now that you know more about some of the dangers, let's take a look at additional design activities where harmful materials may be encountered. Pat is about to conduct a right-of-way appraisal at an abandoned industrial site. At her office, she gathers and reviews initial site assessments or land use research documents, fire insurance maps, and old deed registers. Obviously, not all of these documents will be available for all properties, and some may take time to obtain. But find and review as many as you can. 
On site, Pat conducts a careful investigation. Looking for possible harmful materials is part of this appraisal. She finds asbestos insulation, unmarked barrels both inside and outside the structures, drains and sumps with potential contamination, and connecting pipes which apparently discharge outside. It's possible that the contents of the barrels were dumped into the drains. From the site assessment documentation, Pat knows about the presence of above-ground storage tanks. Not reported in the site assessment are additional underground storage tanks, which Pat identified when she discovered connecting pipes and sumps inside the building. Remember, land use documentation is your starting point. Even if your research is thorough and your investigations are careful, you must still be ready for the unexpected. Some locations are more likely to harbor harmful materials than others, such as abandoned mines, quarries, depressions, or old dumps. They're often targets for illegal waste disposal. Railroad crossings or areas along railroads. These areas have a better than average chance of harboring harmful contamination resulting from accidents or discharges. Now that you have a new appreciation for the dangers of harmful materials and wastes, and for how you can minimize your own and your fellow workers' risks, put this new appreciation to work. Your on-the-job experience is invaluable. Use it, along with the information we have provided you, to reduce your exposure to harmful materials. Be on guard, no matter what activity you're involved in. When you get right down to it, it's your brain that's your first line of defense. Think out situations. In known harmful situations, such as in the use of hazardous products, read the manufacturer's directions and the manufacturer's safety data sheets, or MSDS, and follow them. Wear personal protection equipment if that's what's necessary. Protect yourself from unknown harmful situations by seeking any information available to you before you go out on the job. On site, use your senses, but be especially careful about inhaling fumes or dust or touching unknown materials. As you know now, harmful materials can be found anywhere, even in the most unlikely places. And often the presence of these materials goes unrecorded. So stay alert. Just because a location is isolated and looks clean, that's no guarantee of the absence of harmful materials. Or, just because a location is in constant use, that's no guarantee of the absence of harmful materials either. Highway design activities may be the very thing that disturbs such wastes and makes them active. Yes, be on your guard, but keep your perspective. You can work safely and minimize your risk. If you suspect the presence of wastes, the most important thing you can do is communicate the information immediately to your supervisor and your environmental manager. It's better to over-communicate than to let some harmful situations go undetected.